This is the Hercules brand saw bought at Harbor Freight and I'm going to showcase all the features of the saw in just one cut. Here we go. Now what I got here is a mock setup. I'm going to pretend this is trim work. This is really just plywood. These are nice perfect cuts but you can see there's a big gap that opens up up here. The reason for the gap is this dresser has water damage so it doesn't sit perfectly square and it makes these perfectly square cuts make gaps. So I'm going to recut this with the proper angle and let me grab a pencil here. Now with pencil in hand we're going to take this bring it forward to just right there you want a little cut as little removed as possible from this edge. Just mark it. Now if you've already cut the piece to size you're going to be in trouble here. Your piece is going to be too short and you won't be able to do the cut. But we got a line. Let's go cut it. Okay I took my sweatshirt off. Now here's our cut. Our saw is all set to zero. First we're going to open this up. Right now it goes perfectly, makes a nice cut, but we would actually need to go farther back for something like this because this is a really thick board. We have to make the cut standing up. Now I prefer to make the cut this way just because I'd rather have the saw turned away. Now we need this at 45. All outside angles need 45, but this is where the tilting head really comes into play. We're going to disengage that. Yep, going the right way. Now I'm just going to hit the saw blade with a piece of wood. And I'm just going to eyeball. Actually, that looks pretty good. Hold on. Maybe that's a little too strong. I'm going to go back a little. All right, let me show you what I'm looking at here. Just so you guys can see. If I can do this with one hand, it's another question. Stay up. Okay, see, it touches down there, and then it forms a little gap up there. That's exactly what I want to try right now with this cut. So I'm gonna walk around back here. Might even turn this the right way. That should be good. And back to our stand. Compound buckets. Okay, double check. A little nervous making a cut on camera. Now it helps to have the slide because a lot of reasons. But if I started back here, the guard would hit. reason this was a lot harder board than I thought to cut I'm used to cutting pine so I eased up a little bit now let's go back over here and hope my cut is good for camera hoo boys it's like I've done this before a dozen hundred times well, not today, but see, stay square on the top. And remember, the reason for this whole thing is because if you see the bottom here, it's all warped and damaged. So when you lay this up, it's not square because it comes out, see, it comes out because of the bottom. But with the new cut I made, perfect. Okay, one last thing. You have to turn that back to zero because the poor next person that has to use that won't be too happy. There, went back into the notch. I don't care about this angle. 
they don't notice that's not at zero, they're blind. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Well, the thing is, even though it was really cheap, I noticed they put a lot of care and attention and details on this one. So I just had to buy it. Uh, let me actually show you guys what I was looking for. So if you either want this brand or you want more knowledge on what to buy, if you were like looking at different chop saws and you want to know what to look out for, I'm just going to show you some features that made me buy this one specifically. But you can make other educated choices on other saws if you don't want this one. Now let me show you here. All right, we got our little Pixar buddy over here to help us out. Turn that down for us. Okay, see how it's right on zero? Now I'm gonna give it a good shake here. I can get in closer. See, it doesn't budge. If it's shaking, that's me shaking the whole assembly. But it doesn't budge, it locks right on in, watch. It's just gonna lock. See, no budge, no budge at all. Now, you might come into situations where, you know, houses aren't square, and you need like an odd angle. It has this. It's a decent sized knob, so you can get a good twist on it. And once again, it doesn't budge. It actually has a very good grip there, even though it's not locked in because you get a good twist with this knob. A little side note, don't leave, this is gonna come like all the way pushed in like this. If you're turning the saw, you're probably gonna want it farther back. Just a little side note. Another feature, I mean, if you're gonna get the saws that have the tilting head, you want an easy latch like this because you're gonna be doing a whole bunch of trim work. Like I, I do a lot of trim. Look how easy this is, just like that. They even got one on this side, you know, for redundancy. You never know, but. All right, back to this side. But watch how easy this is. I mean, you can just hold it here. Now look, no hands, it just stays in place. They have the right amount of tension in the spring right now to just hold itself in any angle you want it to be held. Keep in mind, remember these guards I was just talking about? Should take my own advice once in a while. Oops, got the weight of the saw on it. Ugh. There we go, yeah. Yeah, I like to keep them back anyway. And now we have clearance. Oh, wow. My own professional advice and I didn't take it. Okay, back to this topic. Now watch. A lot of the saws didn't have this quick lever. Let me show you how easy it is. You get to the standard, and there's like 45s are pretty standard. And I mean, right there, see, it locked in. And just like the other guard, it doesn't budge. I mean, I'm putting a lot of torque on it here. See, not budging. So just like this one here, no wiggle. Very key when you want two cuts exactly the same when you're matching up the trim work. Very nice to have. Of course, standard sizes are nice and all, but we all know houses aren't square as much as you want them to be. Now for those times where you aren't in a perfectly square house, they have this. Now all the saws had this, pretty much exactly the same look, except this handle was plastic on a lot of them. Here, they're metal. You can give it a good twist, which is key because you don't want, once again, this to wiggle. I think you all know what this is. I mean, duh, you own a saw. Let me show you another feature of it. I'm doing floors tomorrow, that's why I bought it. I needed a saw that can handle the slide. Bam. Now, I did notice something that I didn't even expect to see. But you see the little red tag up here? 
you can disable it and now watch bring the saw back down watch this wow all the way to the back I cannot quite explain how many times I've needed to go farther back with the saw sometimes I end up holding the material a little off the guard just so I can get that final cut there are times where you're doing some cuts that you just need the saw to go farther back okay now I'm gonna cover a lot of little side things about the saw here little features this right here I'm probably never gonna use um, they say to hold your pieces with this I'm not gonna honestly do that but what I would use this for is if you're making a whole bunch of cuts to a certain size like a whole bunch of mass production you can put like a piece of wood here, clamp it down, and you can use it as a stop. Now additional little features is right here. This is the stop. Uh, boys, gotta get in there. Now watch the stop. That's max setting. As you can see, it could stop that far. See, if you're doing mass production, like you're making a whole bunch of notches in a board, perfect for that. I don't typically use it, but it's there. You see this? That's all it takes. You don't have a fancy safety switch here. As for me, this is real nice that there's no additional, like sometimes there's like a safety clicker here or you have to do something fancy. It's like, no, you just click it and go. Super last little thing. I love this. This protects the wire going in. I just recently found out how useful it was because I was carrying the saw in by myself. I had to open up the door to the house. I just slammed it up against the wall, opened up the door, put my hand back on the saw. And it wasn't a big deal. Uh, actually, I could probably demonstrate it. I'm not sure if you guys know how to carry a saw, but you just want to turn it so it's at a 45. So you can just get your arm over the top of it here. Oh, this is kind of heavy. But watch. I just kind of go like this. I push up against the wall. This wall is actually very flimsy. Metal studs. I hate metal studs. But look. Easy. And free. But as you can tell, I have my hose, my power cord here, pushed up against the wall. Bam. See? And you know what? It's not that bad. It's not metal, so I'm not damaging the wall too bad. Boy, this is heavy. What's the name of that really strong god again? Oh, man. Whatever.